Hi, Battle Foam fans and people that just watch the internet a little way too much. We have something pretty cool here for you, the new X-Board from Battle Foam. This is our first venture in the plastic injection molding and it has been a great success for us. What you'll notice is you have a really cool cardboard box and that's pretty much all you get. No, I'm kidding. Here we go. Let's open this bad boy up. Once we open it up, the X-Board comes fully packaged, ready to go with some of the following cool features. You'll get an instruction pamphlet with actually my wife's really pretty hands. So if anybody cares, that's, that's, that's what that is. It isn't me. Uh, you'll also get this really fun and easy to travel with bag. Now, this bag is great for one specific reason. It holds all of your parts individually in their own little pocket and allows you to throw this inside of your main briefcase. Now, this is not a bag meant for you to carry around when you go with your export somewhere. This is actually just a storage place to keep the parts separate so you don't scratch the paint off your models. It's also a great way for you to take it and put it in another piece of luggage that will then act as protection from your clothes or your models or whatever else you have in the other compartment. If you want to carry the export, you need to go ahead and check out one of our new bags, the 1520XL. It actually has pockets designed to carry the pieces in a really protective manner. Now, let's break the unit down. You'll notice again that you have this cool little bag with the Battle Foam logo on it. That means it's official and we guarantee it. You'll also notice that when you open this bad boy up, you'll see the pieces that come with it. You'll have not one, but two actual panel pieces in there. Now the board itself, when assembled, will measure out to 18 by 24 inches. It's a very large area. I'll break down a little more detail about that in just a second once we pull out the pieces. You're going to receive two long-sided rails, and you're going to receive two short-sided rails. Now the short-sided rails are obviously going to be the ones that run here and here, and the long side will be there and there. You'll also notice in here, you have one panel or one uh, center area which acts as your center beam that protects everything from, the, uh, from uh, falling through the middle. Now, when you snap these pieces together, you just have a simple click system that just goes into place. Now it's pretty sturdy, but those are just plastic stamp uh, clips. So you want to be careful when you're putting these together that you don't break the clips off. What I normally do is I like to kind of aim it in there and see where I'm putting it. And as a new board, it's always going to be a little tight, so you have to be careful when you put them in there that they go in nice and safe. When you take them off too, the first few times, you're going to notice that the actual snaps themselves are going to be a little tight and they won't feel like they're going to come out of there. Take your time with it the first couple times until the plastic loosens up a little bit. Mind you, this is injection molding, so injection molding takes a few go-arounds before it becomes nice and loose and easy to operate. Uh, you'll put your center panel in. That will act as your brace for the actual pieces that go over the top. Now, you'll notice you have a nice, sturdy, solid frame, just like a picture frame. On the back of it, you'll notice it's kind of honeycomb. Well, not so much honeycomb, square combed. And what that'll do is add some rigidity to the sides of it, so when you're picking it up from its handles, the thing's not going to buckle or fold up. Then you'll let's go into the actual panels themselves. Now the panels themselves are about one inch thick. You'll have a raised area here. You'll notice, and I hope the camera can catch it, that you actually have texture on here, ready for dry brushing and also flocking. This is another, uh, the other cool feature about it is that we painted this black and actually made the raw material black for a specific reason. Why waste a bunch of paint on the board when it's already black? You don't have to primer it. What you do need to do is take some really abrasive uh, soap and water and then just and scrub the crap out of this thing. It's got a lot of mold release agent on here and you want to remove that before you start spraying it or just like any resin model you've worked with in the past, your paint will not stick. So clean this up real nice. Use a nice sponge, maybe something that has some, some texture to it so you can rub out all of the uh, nastiness that's on it and then you're ready to go. So you'll be ready to flock or paint it and move on to the actual displaying of the models. Now, the border molds will snap right into place so you'll have a nice solid area where the pieces go. You have two ways to display the board. You can either put the panels in like so or you can turn the, pan the pieces like this so that you have two areas on the outsides that you can display two cycle characters or one main character that you want to display as your focal point. Another thing about the panels is you'll notice on the back that all these grids are pretty much equal in size. They're all one inch grids. The reason we did that is so that if you're going to magnetize this board, you can. This actually acts just like a map. When you follow a map and you use, let's say, G6 to get to a certain point, you do the same thing here, only you're using just a simple one inch numbering system. No need for a ruler. You simply do, well, I'm going to put a uh, uh, earth magnet here. I'm going to move down five spots, four across. I know that I'm 
five inches down, four inches across, that is where that magnet is. I don't have to guess. So if I'm going to lay out, let's say, a gigantic guard army or a huge signal army or, you know, a bunch of Malifaux models or, or all of my uh, Russians for my Flames of War army and you want to put those all on the board and you want to magnetize them, you can do that and you'll know how close together you'll be because this will act as your source of information. Now, once you put the panel on, you'll be ready to rock and roll and you'll have a sturdy board ready to go. Now, you'll notice how I put my thumbs on the bottom of this. Now, this we made foolproof. The reason why we made foolproof is these panels are not attached. If you flip this over, these panels could fall out. There's a reason for that. The reason we did that is a lot of people magnetize these boards and sometimes leave their models on top. Then they turn their board over. If the board was connected, odds are the model would lose its magnetism and fall off and crush your model. If you drop this in the first couple of times you're playing with it because you don't realize that these aren't permanent in here, it'll teach you basically muscle memory that you don't flip the board upside down. You always keep it this way. There's a very important reason for that. Now, let's show you what a finished version is. So this is how the board's going to come for you. You'll notice you have a battle foam tag here. If you'd rather display something else, you can flip it over. And you have an open panel that you can get some laser engraving done. You can get a trophy shop to do a thing for you. We can do all this kind of stuff for you also. So if you want to label this area already or just use some two-sided tape and a little panel and do them at home yourself, you can put anything on here to actually showcase the name of your army along with the look of it. Now, moving this over, let's look at one that's been finished. The thing you'll notice about the board is that it likes to be pretty. Look how fun that is when you have it all done, ready to go. I've gone ahead and just simply flocked this. I threw a little texture to add a little more 3D look to it. And other than that, it was just dry brushed. And here, same thing. I just dry brushed over the black. This literally, no lying here, took me a whopping 30 minutes to do. 30 minutes. That included the time it took for this stuff to dry. I used a really fast drying glue and painted this thing up. 30 minutes from start to finish. So that just gives you an idea how quickly you'll be able to build an, uh, a display board versus trying to do it with styrofoam or trying to do it with wood or trying to do it other ways out there. So take a look at it. It's on our website. Watch this video again. Hopefully some folks will buy these and really do them up really nice and do some how-tos on YouTube. If you're a person that'd like to learn more about the board or how it works, please give us a call. Our, our lovely customer service folks will be more than happy to answer your question. We look forward to helping you in the future. Thank you very much. Yeah.